and welcome to another video from the best of CET series. In this video, we are going to solve three questions from numbers. So what I will do is, I will show you the questions. You can try those out on your own. Just think about it as an exam scenario. So try to use the shortest method that you can think of and try to solve these questions as quickly as you can. The ideal time frame to solve these three questions is going to be four minutes. So try to solve them before four minutes. I'll show you the questions. You can have a look at it and then have a look at the solution that will follow. If you like our content and want to experience the IMS pedagogy, you can join the IMS zero fee prep programs that will give you access to concept videos, sectionals, full length tests and more for free. You may click on the I button or on the link in the description box below to access the same. Happy learning. In this question, we have to find the greatest five digit number which leaves remainders 5, 6, 7, 8 when divided by 8, 9, 10, 11 respectively. Now, in a normal scenario, what you would want to do or people who know their numbers theory very well, what they are bound to do is they will try to figure out what exactly is the negative remainder in each case. So, if I divide something by 8, my remainder is 5. If I divide something by 9, my remainder is 6 and so on. You can also say that the remainder when you divide this number by 8, 9, 10 and 11 will be minus 3 in each case because positive 5 remainder when you divide something by 8 is the same as a negative 3 remainder when you divide that same thing by 8. So that is the concept that you have to understand. So what we can say is this number n that we have here can be represented in the form of 8a minus 3. It can also be represented in the form of 9b minus 3. It can also be represented in the form of 10c minus 3 and it can also be represented in the form of 11d minus 3. What can we learn from this? If you write this number as n plus 3, it will be a multiple of 8, 9, 10 and 11. And that's how you get the formula. LCM of A, B, C, D plus R. If you are dividing one number by A, B, C, D and then the remainder is R in each case. So that is the formula that we have. So in this context, we have to figure out what is the LCM of 8, 9, 10 and 11 and then add the remainder that we are going to get in each case. So the remainder here is minus 3. So this is what the expression is going to look like. Now what is the LCM of 8, 9, 10, 11? So the LCM of 8 and 9 is 72. 72 and 10 is 360. 360 and 11 is 3960. Right? So the smallest such number will be 3960 minus 3. It will be equal to 3957. Now here is where things become slightly messier. You have 3960 minus 3 as the first number. But what are we expected to find out? We have to find out the 5 digit number, the greatest 5 digit number that exists. Now that is going to be slightly painful if you proceed along this path. For people who want to understand how to get to the solution through this route, I will continue with the solution. For those of you who are sort of looking at the shorter solution, you might want to skip a few seconds ahead and have a look at the other solution that I will share. So in this case, the number has to be in the form of 3960k minus 3. So any number that is in the form of 3960k minus 3 is going to give you the result as has been mentioned in the question. So we have to figure out what such numbers are present that are less than 6 digits or that are 5 digits long. Now if you look at it, 3960k is almost 4000. Now 4000 multiplied by what gives you 5 digit numbers? So 4000, if you take a look at a simple thing, 4000 into 10 gives you 40,000, which is a significantly large five digit number. So 4000 into 20 will give you 80,000, which is again a large number. 4000 into 25, 4000 into 25 is going to give you 1 lakh or 100,000, which is a six digit number. So if this number would have been 4000, 25 would have been the point wherein this number would have ceased to be a five digit number and would have become a six digit number. For 3960, 25 is still going to be okay. So what we can do is we can just check 3960 multiplied by 25 minus 3. So what is the number that we get? So we can have a look at this. So 25 into some number. Now if you want to simplify this calculation as well, what you can do is instead of multiplying by 25, you multiply by 100 and divide by 4. Now multiplication by 100 is nothing but adding two zeros towards the end. So we can write this as 3960 by 4, which is going to be nothing but 4 9s are 36. So the remainder is 3. 4 9s are 36 followed by 3 zeros. Minus 3 is what completes this expression. 
so this will be nothing but 9000 or 99000 minus 3 or 98997 which is basically a five digit number sufficiently large is this the largest number how can you figure out you basically look at the next multiple of 3960 so if you add 3960 to this you will see that it crosses 1 lakh you already have 98997 rupees with you if someone gives you 3900 rupees more let's say you cross 1 lakh comfortably so this is the largest such number that we are looking at is it among the options yes option 2 is 98997 which is definitely our answer now the shorter way of doing the same question is nothing but trying to figure out the critical points that we have here if you divide this number that you are going to get by 10 you should get remainder as 7 if you divide a number by 10 and the remainder is 7 what does it mean the units place digit has to be 7 first option valid second option valid third option is definitely not true if you divide this number by 10 the remainder is going to be 9 so what will this will not work option 4 will definitely not work option 5 is still in contention then you look at the second most obvious choice if you divide a number by 9 you know how to find the remainders when you divide something by 9 right so you just have to add the digits get the digital sum if the digital sum is equal to 9 then you can say that the number is divisible by 9 if it is not 9 then it will tell you the remainder when you would have divided that number by 9 so the remainder when you divide something by 9 has to be 6 so the digital sum of these numbers has to be 6 so we'll just check the options that we have shortlisted so when you look at 99777 what you can do is you can simply ignore the two nines that we have here because if you add 9 and then try to figure out remainder by 9 definitely it's going to be 0 so in this case 9 and 9 we will not even consider 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21 the digital sum is 2 plus 1 that is 3 that is not going to work so option 1 is also not right the second option you can again ignore the nines that we have 8 plus 7 15 1 plus 5 6 yes this is in contention the last option 98797 7. again you can ignore the two nines that we have here we are left with 877 7. 8 plus 7 15 15 plus 7 22 22 is nothing but 2 plus 2 that is 4 so when this number is divided by 9 i am going to get remainder 4 but i need to get remainder 6 so option 5 is also wrong so the only option that survives is option b during the test you might want to use this method compared to the method that we had done earlier so that is a habit that you want to get into if you see options that are very close to each other that have a lot of nines you have to figure out divisibility by nine it's the best thing that you can do and that is going to the options in this question the product of two numbers a and b is 2366 the hcf is 13 so if you say that the two numbers are 13 a and 13 b let's say for example then the product of these two numbers will be 2366 we also know that if 13 is the highest common factor of these two numbers then a and b should be co prime to each other they should not share any other factor because if they would have shared any other factor the hcf would have been 13 into that another common factor that we would have got so 13 a and 13 b are the two numbers a and b are co prime that's what you have to understand now if 13 a into 13 b is 2366 if you cancel out a 13 from here you will get 13 ones are 13 106 remains 13 8s are 104 26 remains 13 twos are 26 if you again cancel out the second 13 you will get 13 ones are 13 you will be left with 52 which will give you 13 fours are 52 so that will tell you that a multiplied by b should be 14 now if you look at it a and b what all values can a and b take a can either be 1 and b can be 14 are both of them co prime to each other yes so 1 and 14 will work the other set of values that a and b can take would be 2 and 7 now just remember that 1 and 14 are not the original numbers the original numbers are 13 a and 13 b so that is what we are going to see now what do we need to do we need to find the remainder when 117 is divided by the sum of the numbers 117 is not divided by 1 plus 14 no 117 is divided by 1 into 13 plus 14 into 13 right so in this case the two numbers will be 1 into 13 plus 14 into 13 you can either club 1 and 14 together and get the sum of the two numbers directly or you can figure them out individually it's completely your call 
So in this case, it will be nothing but 13a plus 13b, which is 13 into 1 plus 13 into 14, or you can say 13 into 15 if you combine the two parts. This will be nothing but 130 plus 65 or 150 plus 45. Again, your call. You will get 195 here. If you divide 117 by 195, what is the remainder? The remainder is 117 itself. Is 117 present among the options? No. So, my answer most probably has to be cannot be determined. If you look at the second set and again try to explore what is going to happen, it will confirm your answer. So, again we are saying that let A be equal to 2 and let B be equal to 7. So, what is the sum of the two numbers? 13 into 2 plus 13 into 7 which will be 13 2s are 26 plus 13 7s are 91 which is 117 or you can say 13 into 9 that is 117. What is the remainder when 117 is divided by 117? It is 0. So, the remainder could be 0 or the remainder could be 117, we cannot say for sure. So, the correct answer here is going to be option E that is cannot be determined. Now, this question is mostly based on trial and error because you have to figure out which of the options will be positive. There will be a lot of ways to figure out positive numbers using this information, but from the given options, which ones are positive? That is what we need to figure out. Now, in this case, x, y, z are all negative in nature. They are all consecutive integers and x is larger than y is larger than z. That is what we know. Now, if you look at, let us say, option number 2, option b, x into y into z, three negative numbers multiplied with each other is going to give you a negative number. So, that is why option b is definitely not positive. What about option C? X plus Y plus Z, a negative number plus another negative number plus a third negative number is going to give you a negative number and that is why option C is also always going to be negative. What about option A? Let us say. Now, if you look at option A, X minus Y, Z. Now, X is a negative number, right? Y into Z, if Y is negative and Z is negative, Y into Z becomes a positive number. So, what we are trying to say? x which is a negative number minus y z which is a positive number. So, if you subtract a positive number from a negative number, right? a negative number is already negative and you are subtracting more from it. So, what will remain? A negative number. So, option A is also not right. So, if you are not able to visualize this, take some three random negative numbers and check what happens. You will get your answer. Now, we are left with option 4 and option 5. Now, if you look at option 4, it is x minus y into y minus z. If you look at the first part of this inequality, x greater than y. So, if you subtract y from both sides, you are going to get x minus y greater than 0. So, x minus y is positive. If you look at the other inequality, y greater than z, we can see that y minus z is greater than 0. So, y minus z is positive. Now, if you look at option 4 or option d, x minus y, positive number multiplied by y minus z, another positive number. Two positive numbers multiplied by each other are going to give you a positive number as the answer. So, option D is correct. Option E, x into y minus z, x is a negative number, y minus z is a positive number, negative number multiplied by a positive number will be a negative number. So, option 5 is also wrong. So, the correct answer here is option D. So, I hope you are able to figure out how to solve questions by using options or by reading the information and interpreting it to generalize the information. And I also hope that you will be able to apply whatever we have studied in this particular video. I will see you again in the next video. Till then, happy learning.